Are you ready? I am ready. Of course I'm ready. I'm always ready. I don't know how I'm ready today. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Moved things around here a little bit uh, tonight because I wanted the cameras to line up. Now, when I look at her, I'm looking at her on the screen, and I'm really happy about that. So oh, there I am. I'm on the screen. Yep. Finally. There you are. <laughs> I, w I guess I had a laugh. <clears throat> sure. Yeah. So. Have I told you today that Michael Rosenbaum is the best Lex Luthor to ever be put on film? And I'm going to continue to say that until I get a comment from him on one of these live streams. But hey, listen, let's talk about some more important things. I, folks, I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, sound and video, good. Thank you, Curtis. Nice. I'm, I'm not in the best of spirits tonight. And my beautiful wife sitting across from me can attest to this uh, I haven't been mean to you but Who, to me mm -hmm. no he hasn't been mean good thank you for I did warn Zen though I said John might be in a mood tonight <laughs> and I explained why you know when you are old like me and you wake up in the morning uh, sometimes you have injuries <laughs> you wake up injured and you're like how did I hurt myself while I was asleep? Uh, I'm somebody that has dealt with a bad back my entire adult life. Uh, literally had surgery on my back when I was 23. Uh, and this morning I woke up like with crippling pain in my back. Mm -hmm. uh, this happens pretty regularly and usually with some rest and some taking it easy, uh, it goes away. But today we are in the the, the the heart of it so if i come across as a little angry cut me some slack and if you see somebody in the chat that says wow this guy's a real jerk maybe remind him uh, because maybe they're not watching now and yeah. i say remind him because a woman wouldn't behave that way it's, I, it's only I already dude. told zen just ban him <laughs> i but. am not liking how i need to adjust my camera which i can't do i'm going to do it here live oh no just because it really bothers me how low I feel like I am. You uh, do look a little short. There we go. That's uh, a little better. I look like I'm taller than you. Yeah, we can't have that because yeah. I'm a foot taller than her. At so. least a foot. I'm a little short person. <laughs> See, that's gone down too far, but we're going to keep it that way, and it's fine. So listen. Um, he failed to tell you guys that I did offer to do the stream by myself so he could rest. But he said, no, I have to be here for everybody. And I said, all right, I get it. Well, am I supposed to play along? Is that, oh yeah, 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 you know, I was like, hey, uh, you know, gotta, it's, it's, I work one night a week, you know, what, what do you want from me? I can't skip my night of work. Uh, yeah, that's, so, yeah, that, that's it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, couple of things as far as updates uh things going around in the fish house haven't had any major things happening in this building but i have had some things happen with that big monstrosity that is outside of our living room uh that oh, the pond? is a 1500 gallon pond with koi and goldfish in it this is our first winter with the goldfish with the mm -hmm. with the koi with the pond and uh the uh, painkillers are good, Curtis. But I was getting ready I, to answer yeah. in the chat. I told her I'm not doing that. I told him, take some ibuprofen. He said, no, I want to know if the pain is getting better on its own. I was like, it's duh, true. take some ibuprofen. It'll help with the, it has anti-inflammatory in it. It'll help with inflammation. You know, it'll help you feel better. And you're like, no. If I, I, I usually wait a couple days to start medication when there's nothing, like there's no turning back. So Shoot, uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I have a headache. I don't care. I took so much ibuprofen back in the, uh, what, late 90s that I, I just, Advil is still in business because of me. <laughs> uh, but hey, listen, the pond, uh, of course, it's wintertime. North Carolina winters are not extreme by any stretch although the last couple of weeks have been pretty daggone miserable uh, but that's been across the entire country uh, we've had a, a pretty devastating cold spell here 
And uh, it, 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 well, it affected the pond, but it didn't hurt the pond. Uh, we keep the waterfall running. We keep the waterfall running on the one up here. Um, and all the fish are fine. Uh, as long as the water's moving, it doesn't freeze over entirely. I did go out uh, to the pond one of the days, and it was, uh, it was a nice little sheet of ice over the top, but not the entire thing, because where the water was flowing with the waterfall mm. was still keeping a big giant hole there, and that's, you know, if it completely freezes over, your fish are all going to die. So I was glad to see that it that it didn't do that. Freezing like that is not a normal thing around here. Mm -hmm. We only had a couple of days last year where at night it got below freezing. Um, and it's it's really only been a couple of nights this year too. And then today, we quite literally- I had to turn the AC on. We have the air conditioning on in this building today. And over the weekend, the pond was frozen. But anyway, one of the things that has startled me and maybe uh, some of my experienced koi keepers in here can uh, can can speak on this? Can you please or type on this? I would like for uh, you to read the comment by Dave the Fish Dude, please. I found it's just best to listen to the wife. They're usually right. Best oh, comment of the night. Yeah, thanks. Uh, ban him, Zen. No. <laughs> no. Of course you're right, Dave. Uh, but you know. Oh, Melissa <laughs> said, John, just don't take buffer in. This. Get it? <laughs> You <laughs> rascal, you. Uh, the the back thing is not, it's not new for me. It's just, it does put me in a bad mood. And, and the, the thing is, the reason why the back started bothering me is because I decided I was going to do a big project on the barn this weekend. And my body's like, <laughs> you think? No, yeah, yeah. no, we're not going to let you do that. So anyway, that's why the thing with the back's happening. But... I know a thing or two about koi. I've, I've, I've researched koi and been interested in koi for my entire fish keeping journey. And it is now at 49 years old that I got them for the first time, keeping them myself. But I, knew, I do know a thing or two about koi. Being that we are from Virginia, I looked into koi a lot um, as, uh, you know, through the years. And the winters, although we're only one state away, they are drastically different up in Virginia than they are here. So I looked at, you know, how to deal with koi in the wintertime and with the snow and with all of this. So I know a thing or two about it. I didn't go into this blind, but I have been shocked twice in the last week. And if I'm being honest with you, watch out now because I'm going to use some foul language. It's pissed me off. Better than to be. Yeah, go on. ahead. <laughs> koi, Sorry. in the wintertime, uh, they hibernate. And they go down to the bottom of the pond, and they just chill. You'll see them. They're very slow. They're just, <coughs> excuse me, they're just barely moving. Mm. And with ours, we have the two caves for them to hide in. So they're in the caves. They're all huddled together, them and all the goldfish, and they just kind of chill in there. And I don't, I don't know if koi, this is what I don't know. Maybe I should talk to an expert. I don't know if they can go in and out of this or if they stay in this hibernation mode uh, because when they're hibernating and they're very relaxed and their body's moving very slowly, they can be kind of taken away by the current. And I've had two... You would be like a koi right now in the pond. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> two koi, none of the goldfish. There's 24 goldfish in that pond. Two koi end up in my skimmer mm -hmm. over the last week and a half. And I was... Oh, The first time I can see the waterfall of my pond from my office where I sit and do all of my computer work. And I'm sitting there one day and I look out and I see the biofall or the, excuse me, the stacked slate sphere burping. And that's an indication for me, the water is either low or the filter is stopped up uh, because 
just, just give you a brief overview of how my pond works. The skimmer's on one end. The plumbing goes from the massive pump that's in the skimmer. It goes underground. And then about halfway to the biofalls, it splits and it goes to the uh, the stack, space, stack slate sphere. That's why I said it slow last time, because uh, mm -hmm. if I don't, it sounds like slip, slip, slip. Right. And the water going to that stack slate sphere is turned down. There's a ball valve on it. It's turned down because you don't want the water shooting up out of it like a geyser. So if the water gets low or if the, the skimmer is a little bit clogged up and there's not enough water going through that pump, water will spit out of the stacked slate sphere because water that's under pressure is going to take the path of least resistance. It's going to go down the pipe that doesn't have a ball valve that's turned down on it, which would be all the way over to the biofalls. So if anything's going on, uh, there's, there's no le trees directly above our pond, but they're close enough where when we have a lot of wind, mm -hmm. I've had it before where the entire top of the pond was covered. Oh, yeah. um, we've had a lot of leaves and these are sycamore leaves. They're big giant leaves. Skimmer, I have to clean it out twice a day in the fall. Uh, and one of the ways I know it's time to clean it out is I see that spurting coming up out of the uh, sphere. So I see that. I don't panic because I know, you know, aquascape stuff is like built like tanks. It, it can run like that for a little bit. I don't need to run out there and unclog it. Uh, everything's going to be good. So I don't panic over it, but I'd say within five minutes of seeing that, I stop what I'm doing. I go out there and damn it, if one of my koi, and it was Ed, his name's Ed, the gray and white one, damn if that was, wasn't was stuck in the filter, in this in this uh, skimmer. And I thought the daggone thing was dead. I was bummed. I was just like, oh no. But I reached down there and I, and I touched him. I assume it's a him because I named him Ed. Uh, all four of them have to be males because they all have male names. Greg, Micah, uh, Jim, and Ed. But I can't call my girl cat William Wallace. Well, anyway. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's 2024. You can call him whatever you want. I thought this, this koi was dead. I've waited my whole life to have koi. Uh, but as I touch him, he starts to very slowly, very gracefully move. And I'm like, okay, good. He's not dead. Take him out, put him back in the pond. And he very slowly goes back down and, and goes back to sleep. And I was so relieved by that. But mm -hmm. daggone it, if two days later it wasn't Jim. Really? Did the same thing. Did I don't he? I don't even think I told you about that. You didn't. Same but exact I did, thing. I did see Ed moving very slowly today. He was just like... Well, but that's what they do in the winter. They don't, they don't exert a lot of energy because they have to store everything for the whole winter because they're not eating and all of that. So there we go. So uh, that freaked me out because I'm like, listen, I value all fish, okay? I really do. I'm the guy that will be mad at you if you feed feeder fish. We have 24 fish in that pond that started their life as feeder fish. If one of them was to perish... It would not have the same effect on me you wouldn't as know. one of the coins. Well, you probably, probably wouldn't, wouldn't even know. But I would, uh, I'd be devastated if one of the koi was to go. Because these are two foot long koi. I mean, these are big fish. Mm. Um, none of the goldfish. They've all been fine. But two of the koi have been stuck in the skimmer. Um, and again, it's because they're hibernating. They're very low movement. They're very chilled. And I think they just kind of get carried away in the current. I'm wondering if perhaps I should turn everything down a little bit, get the water moving a little slower. I don't know. But if yeah. it continues to happen, maybe do that. I'm going to do that. You should do that. I, I will do that if it, uh, if it continues to happen. So, yeah, that's been my um, trauma this week. And maybe the bending down in the skimmer and pulling the fish out multiple times. Maybe that's why my back is all broken. And maybe but. it's a good thing that you're going to be the one doing the talking during that fight and not fighting. What? Oh, Joey's fight. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. They did a live stream the other day, yeah, that which was I watched. Very that was interesting. Fun. That was fun. It was a fun stream. Why would, what brought that up? Your back hurting 
why you can't fight? Yeah, when Joey asked me if I wanted to fight in that, I, that, I told him, no, I can't because of my back. <laughs> he never asked because he knows me well enough to know I would have said, uh, who, do you, who do you think you're talking to? You think I'm going to get in there and fight? No way. Uh, but yes, so if you don't know that yet, folks, uh, these golden pipes will be commentating the, uh, the, the Fins and Fury match, mm -hmm. matches, fights. Uh, coming up in August, really excited about that. Joey Mullen's going to be fighting Rod. The monster, the, the monster from Eastern Canada is going to be fighting the monster from New York. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, and I get to be up there with Paul Cafaro and uh, playing Joe Rogan. Or I don't know if maybe Paul's going to be Joe Rogan and I get to be the other guy. But I'm the bald guy and I'm old. I'm the same age as Joe Rogan. So yeah, I think it's only fair if sense. I take him. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, that's going to be exciting. There's going to be a lot more information about that uh, soon to come. Listen support your boy here okay and she's going too but i'm the only one that's going to be you know like in the thing uh if you're going to buy it on pay-per-view don't do it yet if i don't think the tickets i don't think it's for sale yet for pre-order but uh wait till i get my code so you can buy it for that and i can make a couple dollars off of it because so i mean hey listen you want me to be honest with you right so there will be there's the website link zen ginger because she's the best uh, yeah, check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. I still don't want to talk about the other fights that I know about that are happening in that. Um, it's going to be really cool, though. Uh, I've already talked to a couple of the other fighters and stuff like that. i got to get their information so that I have stuff to talk about when, uh, when doing the commentary. So it's going to be a good time. Anyway. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I have to... I have to be the angry man. Again? Yeah. Why? Can I do something fun? Of course least? you can. Do it. Before you do that? Do it. Please? Oh, whoops. Lost my chat. Okay, so this week I got a couple uh, packages in the mail uh, for my cats. And uh, thank you, Curtis Crump and Spoiled Sushi, uh, for sending them their gifts. But there was one thing in particular that I thought was so freaking adorable and it's fish related. So I didn't think there'd be a problem sharing this on this live stream. I'll share it on my other one too, but okay. So Spoiled Sushi sent this toy. Look, if you want your very own catfish, <laughs> look, how cute is that? It's the cutest thing ever. Show the picture so that people know yeah. what it is. There you, you can go. get it from Chewy. It is so adorable. So any people who have cats and you want your very own catfish, then your cats will appreciate it too. So there. But thank you. There was It was a lot of stuff that got sent to me, and I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Joey has people that are scouring the Internet and any time his name is ever mentioned, he immediately goes to that place where his name is mentioned. Who? He's in the chat right now. Oh. <laughs> you heard me talking about you, didn't you, Joey? Uh, he said, I have some new, so much news. But he's going to tell me privately. I'm excited. Uh, oh. You got my number. And Victor was asking about the shirts. Do you want to do an update about that? That's not what the angry rant is about. But, yeah, they told me this week. The week's not over yet. Maybe I get the call tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is a filming day, so that's not uh, not going to be the best. But, of course, I'll go get them if, uh, if they have them tomorrow. We'll see. I mean, we should be wearing them right now. You shouldn't be wearing an Adam Sandler shirt, and I should not be wearing... What's wrong with this? It's a great shirt, but I you shouldn't be shirt. wearing it right now. You should be wearing our shirt, but we don't have them. So, but but like we'll have them hopefully next week. Uh, I like Adam Sandler, so. I like Adam Sandler, too, but I also like to see our shirts, and I'm sure our shirts are going to look good on you. Um, okay, it's very simple, what I'm going to rant about right now. Okay, it, it's, it's very simple. Rant, rant, <laughs> it, rant, if, rant. If you are someone, <laughs> I don't care who you're ordering from. If you are a fish customer well, that buys supplies... Uh, you, you can do this on Amazon all you want. It's not going to bother me there because Even I don't Amazon's think you should be behind. Amazon. I but mean, honestly, Amazon's behind too. If 
if you are ordering from any aquarium supply online company, uh, there's several YouTubers that have websites, um, whoever it is, it doesn't matter. If the postal service takes six days to deliver your package, don't put a review on that retailer's website saying, I'm giving this a one star because it took six days for the postal service to deliver it. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, that's BS. That is... We can control the postal service. <laughs> if we could control the postal service... We oh, would. people would get stuff the afternoon they ordered it. Yeah. We'd be like Jeff Bezos. We'd be sending it with freaking drones. I mean, but when we or any other retailer, okay, I'm speaking for everybody right now, not just for myself. Yes, this review got put up for like six different products on my website for one star and all four of them were a copied and pasted review from some schmuck that's never been told no a t single time in his life. And yes, I called one of our customers a schmuck because I don't want that customer ordering from us anymore. If they're going to put up a review saying, I'm giving this a one star review because the postal service took six days. It would be different if he said, John and Lisa didn't even ship this for six days. I ain't got no argument for that. But if your order shipped when it was supposed to, and you put up a review for any retailer that is one star because the postal service took that long, you're a bad person. And I'd rather you not be a customer of ours. Yeah, and you can shove that one review right up your rear. <laughs> ooh, ooh, you got her fired up tonight. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the world of online retail, reviews are gospel. I don't know about any of you all, but it doesn't matter if I'm looking at making a large purchase and a large purchase to me is a hundred dollars or more. That's like a significant purchase. I'm going to read reviews. I'm going to read, I'm going to watch reviews on YouTube. I'm going to do all of those things. And the first thing you look at is the star rating. Mm -hmm. How many stars did it get? And if I'm seeing a lot of one star reviews, because some idiot wants to blame the retailer for the postal services incompetence, that just that's just wrong. I think reviews are important, but it's also important to, I think it's important to read the reviews. R read what the one star, two star, three stars are for, because if it's something that's not like, and you know, it's like out of the person's control, the company you're buying from, then, then that might help you to make your decision better. You know, it's like sometimes they're just not accurate. They're well, just and the not, thing is, or it could just be one star, no comment. Like that's somebody that's just hateful. If somebody has a justified beef, if they have an issue, like I said, if we wait six days, I mean, unless you order plants from us on a Wednesday afternoon, it's going to be five days before we ship because that's our policy. We ship on Mondays and Tuesdays because of the postal service not because we don't want to do it but because the postal service is struggling especially the last two weeks but that just burned me up because so many of us it's not just us we're going to be fine yeah but so many retailers there's a lot of retailers that don't have the following and the income that we have from youtube there's a lot of retailers that are this is their livelihood which it's ours too but you know, they're just scraping by and you punish them for something the Postal Service oh, did. That's just that. dirty. Don't do that. Don't do that anymore. Way too many retailers rely on those reviews for you to screw it up. If you got a legitimate like, hey, I ordered a fish and it was dead. I'm giving it a one star review. I mean, hey, you know, we can't and argue another with that. one that we've talked about before. Um, Aquarium Background Tape said, I hate the reviews that they give, three or four stars, then talk about how great everything is. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> then why don't you just give five? <laughs> yeah. Or uh, I'm giving this a three-star review, but I haven't fed the food to my fish yet. 
<laughs> I think that's funny. It's it's tough, um, but it is what it is. So sorry to do that to you. And uh, if you are the customer that did that, um, please understand, you're not good at reviews. <laughs> you don't know how this works. Yeah. This whole being a human your, being thing, you don't review, know how it works. Your review sucks. <laughs> you need to go to school and learn how to become a proper reviewer of products. What's Joey doing here? Good Lord. Joey's like, yeah, John needs to make his money however he can. I'm going to become a member and then gift 10 other people huh? memberships. Joey, Whoa. you're killing it. Thank oh, you, my friend. Oh, he did, didn't he? I, I have jo to still respond in chat. <laughs> of course you do. And yes, please, anybody that is uh, seeing her staring down, you can't see her phone because it's off screen, but she is... Uh, She's chatting with y'all in there. Uh, so thank you for that, Joey. Um, cool. Very nice of you. I, uh, I watched a fight movie the other day because I was like, yeah, I haven't seen this movie. <laughs> Joey said and that's coming out of your cut. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, great movie recommendation. Not boxing, which Joey is going to be doing, but uh, Warrior. That movie came out in like 2012, and I haven't seen it yet. I'm a humongous Tom Hardy fan. And his character in that movie, although a total jerk, was one of my favorite characters he's ever played. So uh, that was, what a great movie. If you haven't seen that yet, watch it. And I'm a big fan of Joel Edgerton too. Uh, but anyway, listen, I've been talking too much. I want you to start out with this whole, this was your idea, talking about oh. moving aquariums. Well, because you came to me and said, I need a topic for the live stream. And I was like, facts. Let me use my thinking uh, brain here for a second and come up with something. And I was like, what about moving aquariums safely? And, and my thought was moving aquariums safely in your home without hurting yourself because his back and you know all that, it kind of made me think about people that do things spontaneously and want to move their tank and don't think about how it could hurt them. John was like, well, let's take it a little farther. And that way it could be a topic about moving aquariums to other houses or, you know, in the house, not just, you know, be a little bit more broader with the subject. So I said, okay, that sounds good to me. And I think that one of the main things that you should keep in mind when you're you are planning on moving your aquarium even if it's four hours away or if it's just the bedroom you know the room next door or you know in your house don't over complicate things uh, that's my that's the most important thing I can say about it don't over complicate it if you have a planted aquarium and you're moving right down the street, you don't have to take all your plants out of an aquarium that is completely established with wonderful root system going on. It's just lovely. And you know, you think you need to take everything out of the aquarium and then replant it when you get there. You don't have to do that. I know people that have done that. I've seen comments. I see posts on Facebook and stuff, and you don't have to do that. Um, I actually, I suggest that anything that's like 75 gallons or smaller, just leave it in there, leave a little bit of water. Uh, if you have like um, heavy stones, like dragonstone or something, yeah, take that out because that's just gonna weigh it down more and be harder to, to move. But I think that if you, especially if you have a small tank, like a five gallon or a 10 gallon, just drain that water down. If you have shrimp in there or snails, small fish, leave them in there too. It's really not that big of a deal. Your fish will be fine, especially if it's just a very short move. Now, if you're moving four hours away, even then when we moved down here, I drained my nano tanks just down to about this much water, left the plants in, left the fish in, had the lids on them and just moved everything. Um, 
put them in my vehicle and, and just drove down here and everything was fine. And I'll give you another example. When Diana Wallstead came here with her little one gallon bowls, do you want to know what she did? She covered it with um, cellophane. Yeah, cellophane. All three of them. With a rubber band. Yeah, and a rubber band. And she didn't remove any of the water. And she had shrimp in them and she just brought them down just like that. And she drove two and a half hours and they were completely fine. When she left, she put it right back on and took them back home. They were fine. No air stone, no heater, nothing, just the bowls. So anyway, but, uh, and there's a lot more to it too. I mean, there's, this is such a broad subject, you know, like as far as your, your media, your sponge filters, your filter media, you want to keep that wet. You know, you can have a bucket, take some of that water from your aquarium that you were taking out, stick it in a bucket, keep all that stuff nice and wet, you know, preserve that, that uh, beneficial bacteria so that when you're starting it back up again, that you, you don't have to worry about losing all of that. Um, even, okay larger tanks when you start looking at larger tanks like 125 gallons 90 gallons just larger tanks i suggest that's when you start taking that substrate out and you know that gravel that sand whatever you know all those heavy decorations that might be in there because that's going to really hurt someone's back and you want to put that in like a bucket we've done this so many times i feel like it's just <laughs> second nature for us but you know again being careful if you do have a heavily planted tank that is a larger tank just do your best to remove as much as you can without having to up you know uproot all those plants even with the really large tanks but i'm gonna say you're probably going to have to with the larger ones. You, know, you can get away with taking all the stone out, even some of the driftwood and stuff like that, and the substrate with the larger ones, though. And like I said, don't overcomplicate it. And even if it is just a 10 or 20 gallon and you think that you're super strong, get somebody to help you. Have somebody on each end and move it, even if it's just to the other room, because if that... If it slips and it falls, that's just going to be a huge mess, and you don't want that either. It's very true. Uh, lots of talk about Joey. Uh, people asking if I'm fighting. No, that's definitely not happening. Oh, I've, um, and I've, I did remove the uh, the delay there, so you can chat away. There is no more 60-second rule. Did that just for you, Joey. Oh. Uh, and he said, thank you. I missed a lot of replays. I don't hate. Oh, no, that's not the one. He, there was one that he said to you, Lisa, please sit with Tamara at, in the VIP. Oh. She's a lunatic and will try to jump in the ring if I start losing. Oh, no. Now he's going to focus on training. That's so. hilarious. You know, yesterday was Tamara's birthday, too. So happy birthday, Tamara. Happy birthday to you. I would sing to you, but you don't want that. Trust me. It's not, uh, not a pretty thing. Tom I have Hardy. a rule. I do not sing happy birthday, not even to the kids. Tom Hardy, what? I see Joey said, yeah, Tom Hardy is awesome. We, we met Tom. You met Tom Hardy. Didn't you take? I wish. Didn't you and um, you and CJ got your picture taken with him? No, that's Matt Hardy, the wrestler. Tom Hardy's the guy that played Bane and Batman. And Oops. he played uh, the best character. Well, in the I world. thought we were talking about like fights and stuff. So I remember Hardy and yeah. all right. Scratch yeah, different guy. It would have been a different deal if I uh, if I if I met Tom Hardy. Somebody suggested TNT by ACDC for Joey's walk-up music. I'm going to leave it up to Joey. He's going to have to scroll through his text messages. That's what he's going to do. I told him the best song that he should use as a walk-up, and I promise you he won't do it. But I gave him the best walk-up song he could possibly use, and it's just the intro to the walk-up, to the, to the song. It would be absolutely incredible. Uh, and I hope he does it because then I'll be like, ha, ha, I did that. But yeah, you can uh, keep hold of things up there in the VIP suite. Uh, keep Tamara under control because, I mean, I'm not going to say Joey's going to be losing. It'll be fun. Because I know that guy too well. But uh, 
but yeah anyway i've i've come to learn something about this whole thing that we're doing here on youtube i've always been afraid of telling a story that i've already told um i'm not that guy anymore i'm not afraid of that why because we have new people that come in all the time Holy we crap. see new names all the time in the chat and uh so there's going to be a lot of people that have not heard this story but this is a great <laughs> it's coming out to the I breaking glass behind. with stone cold uh yeah i'm current on mine because i'm I, a good streamer but well i was doing all of the talking speaking of uh joey coming out to the stone cold theme i think that's a mistake joey i'm telling you listen folks don't do it now unless you have Apple Music or Spotify or whatever and you can listen to it while not turning this stream off. I would play it for you here, but then, you know, we'd get copywritten and all that kind of stuff. Listen to like the first 35 seconds of the song Blind from Corn. I don't care if you're a Corn fan. I don't care if you're laughing right now because you're like, oh, he's a 90s new metal dork. I'm a corn fan. I have been since the 90s. The opening or the intro to the song Blind all the way up till about 15 seconds after Are You Ready? That's the best intro. I've never seen anybody use that. If I'm ever in a place for anything, which I don't know what that would be, where I'm going to walk up for and I need to walk up music for something. That's what it's going to be. I promise you that. I don't know what in the world. I'm almost 50 years old. What could I ever possibly need a walk-up song for? If Joey decides to have walk-up songs for the commentators, that's the song I'm using. I promise you that. Anyway, the Stone Cold intro is a really good idea. But there is a, um, there's a story that I've told before that is every single fish keeper's worst nightmare but I got to set it up a little bit. Um, commentators get walkout songs too. <laughs> well then, hey, get permission from Corn uh, for that one because that's, that's what I'm coming out to. Um, we had some friends uh, when we had our shop. We that, did? We had that, friends? Yeah, back in the day, we had <laughs> friends. Uh, and the, the gentleman was a big customer at the store and a great friend of ours, huge supporter of the channel. He helped us out, bought some equipment for us for live streaming and stuff. It was amazing. Really good friends, really good supporter of the channel. Uh, he bought a very large aquarium. It was a 240. Um, and, oh, I, I remember. I remember now. Okay. I was like, why was it at the shop? I built a stand for this aquarium. And he had very specific needs for this aquarium, for the space that it was going in. And it also had to accommodate the size of the aquarium. So he actually brought the aquarium or they had it delivered or I don't remember how it got there, but it brand new, had never been used, got this aquarium at our shop. And it was sitting in the warehouse area of our shop for a while because I built the stand. And I built the stand out of old uh, doors from a historic building in Richmond, Virginia. This gentleman that I'm talking about, I don't want to say his name because I feel weird saying people's names without them knowing I'm talking about them. Um, he worked for a company that renovated old buildings and there's a lot of those in Richmond and what they would do is they would basically gut the buildings and then rebuild them and turn them into apartments, condos, office buildings, all that kind of stuff. Uh, he worked for the company that did that and they had accumulated a bunch of old doors out of these historic buildings. He brought me a bunch of those doors. I cut them all up, which a lot of people would say was criminal, but he asked me to do it. I did it. Cut them all up and made this stand, the, 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 the structure, not the structure, but the the face of this stand and the top of this stand was made out of these doors. In fact, the top of it was a solid door uh, that I cut holes in for the overflows and all that. It was really, really cool. I was really proud of this stand. Built it all for him. And then uh, we 
transported the tank in my truck from the shop down to his house. And it was a big day. You know, it was a big thing for him because it had been sitting in my, uh, in, in my shop for months. Been the day he's been waiting for forever, right? His first really big tank. He was super excited about it. So he had a couple of big dudes, like, like big guys, Stone Cold Steve Austin kind of guys. One was really short, but the strongest person alive. And the other was like a giant. He was like Greg. It was just this six foot five, big, huge guy. Brought those two guys. We put the tank in the truck. No issues because it was, I literally had a loading dock. So it was just basically sliding it into the back of the truck. Drove it down to Richmond. I, shocker, because of the conversation we had earlier, I, my back was out. And I was like, hey, y'all, I, I cannot help you carry this thing. Uh, I'll transport it down there for you, but you're going to need some people there to get this thing in the that house. That stand you built, though, for that aquarium was beautiful. I loved it. And I'm pretty sure it's still in use now. Uh, it just has a different tank. Yeah. And unfortunately, we've lost touch with these folks, and I haven't talked to them in a while. But, um, but yeah, I was really proud of that stand. It was painted white. It was really nice. Um, so we get down in there. We take the stand in first. I say we. I, I didn't help because I'm crippled. Um, stand goes in without any issues, obviously. Um, and the, the, it, was, it fits so perfectly in the spot. It was like it was it was almost like it was made for that spot. It was. <laughs> Goes in there, we're all set. I'm not gonna help carry the tank. Again, I mean this thing weighs I don't know, probably four hundred. I don't know what it weighs, but it was very, very heavy because it had two weirs on it, uh, which those were made out of glass. I'm pretty sure he had ordered it specifically with thicker glass. Like this was yeah. a heavy tank. It was. It wasn't as heavy as this, but it was a heavy tank. Um, so I was in the kitchen, which is, I know that sounds weird, but the, the tank was right up against the wall between the living room and the kitchen. So I'm standing in the kitchen, basically there, ready to help once they get it into the, the door. And I'm standing there or eating a piece of pizza. And boom. I go out and my friend who this tank was for was just like this. Oh my gosh. And my immediate reaction I was I wasn't there. No, she wasn't there. I was working at the fish store. My immediate reaction was who's hurt? Like where's the blood? There's got because when I went out there this aquarium had exploded. And this was not tempered glass, so big shards had flown around. It was gnarly, and it and I just knew somebody had an artery cut on their leg, or like yeah. like I knew there was going to be absolute carnage. Thankfully, I'd been to EMT school back in the '90s. I was ready, but nobody was hurt. Thankfully, what had happened was, and this is men. Men have this problem, uh, and you know what? We have a guy in the chat right now named Joey Mullen. He would be this guy, and I've actually seen him do it. We've all seen him do it in video. And well, Bob. Bob, too, where they're like, I got it. It's, no, I got it. Don't worry about it. Greg was that way when we were carrying your tank. He was like, I got this side. Yeah. The three of you take the other side. You have people that have superhuman strength. Well, it wasn't the big six foot five guy that said that. It was the smaller, very well built, uh, very stocky man that was like a construction worker. And he, you could tell this dude was country strong, could lift a tractor if he needed to. That guy and the six foot five guy, just the two of them, were going to carry this into the, um, into the house. The truck was parked right outside the garage. They had to go through the garage, up three stairs, through the doorway into the kitchen. Now, the problem with this was not the weight of the tank. Those two guys were able to handle that weight, no problem. I couldn't, <laughs> I, no way. I mean, if like you were trapped underneath it, I could pick it up and, and get you out of there. 
But if I'm just going to care, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing one whole side to myself. Maybe when I was 25, but not now. And this was 10 years ago. So, I mean, I, I was going on 40. But anyway, listen. The reason this happened was a very minute detail that was overlooked. And so, once again, when you're talking about moving aquariums, if you're moving them yourself or you only have one person to help you, this is where, this is the learning lesson here. It's the little things that are going to be the biggest problem. Just at the bottom of those stairs was a little rug. And you have to think about, it doesn't matter if it's Big John Stud on one end and Kane on the other end, Kane from the wrestling guy. Kane Even if you have two, two <laughs> monsters, okay, you've got... I'm not going to say Rod because that's mean to Joey, but Rod, John, Joey knows Rod is a beast. Rod is a monster. So let's say Rod and Rod's twin brother on the other end. It doesn't matter who it is. When people are carrying big things, they don't pick up their feet. They slide their feet. Think about that. Think about the last time you carried something with another person. You slide your feet unless you have to go upstairs. So my guy is sliding his feet, carrying this 400 pound aquarium, not by himself, but carrying half of that weight, sliding his feet, slid it right into that rug, and that's what made him go down. Fortunately for him, he was told by me, even though it wasn't my tank, I told those guys, I said, listen, I've, I've moved a lot of aquariums before, and I know he will tell you the same thing. If this thing starts to go, get the hell out of there. Don't try to be a hero. Don't try to stop it, because if it starts to go, it's going. I don't care if you're the ultimate warrior, it's going. And they were like, yep, that makes sense. I got it, you know, and that's exactly what the dude did. When it started going down because he stumbled, he got the, out of the way, and it saved a lot of blood. Because the way that thing shattered, it would have hurt him severely, because he would have basically been underneath it if he hadn't gotten out of there. I'm not trying to act like I'm a hero. I'm just trying to say, I, I think instinctively he would have done the same thing whether I had said that or not. But I think if you're trying to help a friend and you're carrying this thing and it starts to go, you've, you don't want to upset your friend. So you want to try to catch it. But no friend is worth you getting the bottom half of your leg amputated by an aquarium. Come on. So the little things... I don't care if you're carrying a 10 gallon aquarium from one side of your living room to the other. You need to think about the little things. I got another story. Uh, this is another one that I've told that is, is another one that is, if, you, if I'd have thought of the little things, this wouldn't have happened. This didn't turn out to be uh, as nightmarish of a story as the first one was, but it almost was. We, had, we lived in a house that was a split foyer. Uh, we had an aquarium in our living room. We were renting this house. It was a 125-gallon aquarium. I had just gotten the 240. I had two silver arowanas in the 125. They were about, yours was about like that. I don't know if you can see my hands because the screen's cut in half. Mine was probably about 24 inches and yours was probably 18-ish. So large fish. Mm. Um, we had them in the 125. They were ready for an upgrade. And our landlord had basically told us, you need to get them out of there. I want that tank out of my living right. room because, you know, I don't blame him. So we got the 240 ready. It was time to move the two arowanas. For some reason, I didn't think putting the arowana in like a some type of vessel to transport him was necessary because I'm stupid and I'm a man and we do dumb things. I had seen Brett and Wade on Tanked do this trick with big fish or maybe it was on the show River Monsters or something. I don't know. But I'd seen it on TV. 
the old towel trick where you put the fish in a towel, you wrap that towel around, a wet towel, you wrap the towel around the fish and you transport the fish in this towel. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea, but like I said, I was dumb. Where my living room was, <laughs> she's going to tell me why I'm dumb. Um, our living room was on the complete opposite end of the house from the garage and one floor up. So I had to go from the living room to the other side of the living room, past the kitchen, down the stairs, turn through the basement, <clears throat> through the old fish room, then through our daughter's bedroom, then into the fish room. And I had to do all of that, carrying a fish wrapped up in a towel and put him in his new home, in his new house. Mm. I uh, didn't make it four feet before that fish was on the floor. Mm. The little things. I hadn't considered the power that a fish that size possesses. Yeah, they are strong. You don't realize this until you're holding that long, slimy, don't be weird, I'm not being creepy here, long, slimy, scaly, just Arowana. one solid muscle is what this, <laughs> this little being is. I wrapped him up in the towel. I held the towel by the, you know, you wrap up a towel and I was holding it like a garbage bag and I take off and he just immediately got his way out of that towel, flew about four feet and landed on the carpet. What did I do? I did my best Barry Sanders. I took that towel, put it over the fish, scooped him up and held him like a football and ran all through the house all the way into there mm -hmm. and put him in. Uh, one of his, these things, I don't know what they're called. Dangly but, you know, things. Arowana have it's those. the dangly things. One of those uh, was was hurt, damaged, and you know mm -hmm. those don't grow back. So he only had one for uh, for the rest of his life. But well, I remember when my arowana jumped out of the tank, and I was I had a broken ankle, and I was on crutches, and I had to bend over and pick it up and put it back in the tank. I didn't struggle like you did. It wasn't as dramatized. I just picked her up, put her back in the tank. And I'm with not one foot. I'm not dramatizing this thing. This was real. Like it happened that way. And it was terrifying. It was a surprise again, because I'm dumb. You know, if I had used any common sense, I would realize this is not like carrying a earthworm. I mean, this is arowana's are capable of jumping like four feet out of the water to snipe bugs off of branches in the wild. They're strong fish. A koi would be the same way. I've held two koi this week, taking them from the skimmer, putting them into the pond. Um, and they're a lot stronger than you think, even if you are holding them in a towel. So think about the little things because it could save your life I've never heard of anybody carrying an aquarium and, and getting uh, their life ended. It's weird the things you can't say on YouTube anymore. Um, I've never heard of that. I'm sure there's stories out there, though, of somebody losing a battle against an aquarium. Um, well, there was somebody in chat that said, let me find it. I have to find it. Jade Miller said about two years ago, I stumbled backwards and fell into a 20 gallon empty tank, ended up getting a four inch long, one and a half inch, oh, ended up getting a four inch long, one and a half inches deep cut. That's terrible. See, see Oof. a cut like that will change your life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is like, they write stories about that. I mean, that that's a hardcore, like you could lose a limb kind of thing. So think about the little things because unaliving themselves. Thank you, Zen. It's weird how people have to speak in code on YouTube. It's very annoying when you watch true crime dramas too. Because Anyway. Do they talk like that? I don't watch stuff like that because I don't like to get depressed and feel I know. negative and down. So I just I don't, don't know why I do that to myself. Yeah. I don't know why I do it to myself, but I do it. And yeah. yeah, they have to speak in code because 
if they don't, then they'll get in big, big trouble. But hmm. uh, like FBI raids and stuff like that, it's it's crazy. But <laughs> think about the little things. Um, when Lisa's tank was delivered, yep, I, I still have it. I know I've been getting a lot of questions about that in chat. When it, when are we going to see Lisa's tank? Well, it's right there. Okay, it's right there. I can see it right now. I it's see beautiful. it. I love it. And it's scaped really pretty. It's just missing a couple little things that I still need to add. It's beautiful. And you'll see it very soon. It's going to be a huge surprise. It's not going to be a Sunday video. It's going to be a Saturday video. And it's just going to come out of nowhere and there. You'll see it. All right. Go ahead. If you're on. a religious person, I'm going to ask you to put your hands up. Earmuffs. <laughs> no. I'm no. going to ask you to put your hands oh. up and please say a prayer. Because um, I've been looking at the same thing for two months. Do you? But anyway. You want to leave? <laughs> you going to take over the stream? You going to handle I it? Can oh, do you, it. You've done I, two streams by yourself, so you think it. you're a pro now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, again, even if you're moving a 10 gallon tank, I'm the guy, and, and we've probably all done this. Like she said, I'm not going to drain a 10 gallon tank take all the fish out pull the substrate out pull everything out to where it's just a bare glass box to move it from here to the next room or to move it from one shelf to another or even to move it to the another state i'm gonna drain it down about that far to where it's got you know maybe three gallons of water in it that's about 24 pounds yeah and then the tank weighs maybe 15 pounds if you can't carry 50 pounds, I bet you know somebody who can. Uh, so, you know, think about those things. But it's not as simple as, well, I'm just going to pick this up and I'm going to carry it over there. You need to look at where you're going. Yeah. You need to have, have a, a plan. <laughs> have This is something a lot of people don't think about. And I've been in this predicament before. Have somebody do wire control. Because I've carried aquariums before with the wires from the lights and the hoses from the filters and all hanging off of it because I'm only going from here to there. And you don't think about somebody manning the wires because they're all hanging down. And so you go to put the tank up and what do you do? You put it right on the wires. Now you have to pick the daggone thing up again so that somebody, it's a, have somebody there that's just taking the wires and making the, sure they're in the right place. The worst part is lifting up oh my gosh when we moved that one the 75 gallon that was a treat jeez <laughs> i mean it was both of us but there's what like four inches of substrate and that was the that's the sev uh, the hot that's the heaviest 75 gallon aquarium oh yeah on earth <laughs> well yeah i mean it we didn't take anything out of it because we didn't take the fish out of it nothing we just drained it down really low but and all we were doing was moving it from one stand to another yeah but it was a stand that was a little bit higher so that's what sucked about that and there was two of us but it was some heavy substrate leslie perry said cords they can be fatal <sighs> think about this that cord that's dangling down could be the thing that you trip over and psh. yeah i'm just saying you know worst case scenario yes where are your shoelaces but think about the little things. Don't be wearing your slides. Don't be wearing your Crocs when you're going to be moving. And don't be doing it in bare feet, Tanner Serpa, because you're going to step on that thing and it's going to, you're going to go, ooh, and you're going to fall. And it, like that thing on the end of the cord that plugs into the, oh gosh, you know how many times I step <laughs> on my curling or my flat iron uh, cord, the end of it, because I'll have it up in the thing and it dangles down and it's right there. It's my own fault. I've stepped on that getting out of the shower it many hurts times. in that spot in your foot, that real sensitive area, and you step on it, and it's like all the bad words come out. There's only been a couple <laughs> of times where I've contemplated divorce, and stepping on those cords yeah. is one of them. Yeah, it hurts. So. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I've seen the words common sense in the chat a lot, and that's, that's what it's all about. Don't be a hero. Don't be like Joey, who's like, I'm going to move this 300-gallon aquarium over there. No problem. I'm going to do it by myself. 
I mean, you see him do it. Joey's a strong guy. I mean, he can do those kind of things. Your average person cannot. And you need to understand, particularly you men, because we've got bigger balls than we do brains, need to control yourself and realize your limitations and uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. I don't know how many times there's been things here where I've just been like, I'm not even going to attempt that by myself. And I'm very fortunate to have people that we know that are friends that will drive long distances to help out with these things. Um, and also bring a cage for your cats to put outside the, the fish house. I mean, you know, real good friends. But uh, if you don't know that story, Mark from Aquariums Unlimited came down here to help us carry the new tank. And he brought with him a catio for Lisa. Did a video all about it. You should watch it if you like cats. So, can you move a 180 turned long ways on a dolly or is that too much pressure on the seams? I can't answer that because I don't want to tell you, ah, it'll be fine. And then it blows up. Um, if all you have is one dolly, mm. and when you say dolly, I'm assuming you mean the four wheel carts, furniture movers kind of things. Like what we uh, had We out have there. two of those. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you only have one, go to the store and buy another one. Put one on each end. You're good. Uh, don't try to do it with one. You're going to hit a little rock and your tank's going to go doot. It's going to teeter totter into the concrete and it's going to break. And then you're going to be like, but John said it would be okay. Yeah. I'm not going to play that game. <laughs> <laughs> once, once a bucket full of water I was holding snapped from the handle and fell into the floor where the extension cord was. Uh -oh. Fortunately, the ports were facing upward or else. Well, death, death by fish tanks. I'm sure those stories are out there. Uh, I've seen a lot of aquarium nightmare stories. There's that viral video on the internet of the people sitting in their living room and their tank blows up. I mean, you know, these kind of things happen. Uh, I'm not going to lose sleep worrying about those kind of things, but I do lose sleep over. I got to move this from here to there. Yeah. Uh, that's to, the worst. You would get so stressed out when we would have to move the tanks, especially the big ones. I remember you literally sold one at the fish store just so we didn't have to move it. It was the 240, right? Yeah. The real great big. Yep. It wasn't shaped like these. It was the other two. It was more like this one, but just yeah. a foot shallower or a foot less wide. But yeah, I mean, it, it's you, you got to use common sense, especially when you're talking about something that you could die doing. And yes, I know it's extreme, but you could die carrying a 10 gallon. You, oh, it 10? falls, it falls, it breaks, it goes right in your chest. True. You're dead. True. And think about Didn't how many one people. Guy, Jade, who fell right into it, cut his back. Could have gone straight through into his heart or something, you know? I mean, yeah. Just always have somebody around just in case. So. And, and don't be a hero. Understand limitations. Don't hurt yourself, and also don't hurt the fish. <laughs> oh, and another tip. Okay, so let's just say you want to move an aquarium from one room to the other, and you decide you want to take all your fish out and put it in a bucket. People do that. It's fine. Or a tote. If you have cats or dogs, put them in a room. Lock the door. You don't have to lock it unless you have a smart one that can, un, you know, open My the door. Can. Yeah, we have cats that can open doors and the window to the catio to go outside whenever she wants. But anyway, put them away or else they could become, you know, something for the cat or the dog to play with while you're moving the aquarium. Or the fish could jump and the cat or dog could get it and swat it around and become a toy. I'm just giving you examples. I'm not saying it's ever happened to us. Maybe it has. Actually, yeah, I think it has a couple times. But anyway, um, and put a lid on it if you have to, especially if it's only just, you know, for 20 minutes. So That's really good advice. And, and here's the other thing. Even if it is a 10-gallon, we're saying drain it down. And, and that's fine. We've done that a million times. Um, I think one of the most critical things 
to a safe aquarium move, whether it's moving it from here to there or moving it across the country. Take care of the fish. Get the fish secure. Yeah. Just like she said, put them in a tote, put them in a bucket, whatever you're going to do. Put a, If it's going to be a really long time, you want to put an air stone in there, knock yourself out. That's good stuff. But the reason why that's good is because you will make mistakes due to the stress of wanting to get it done fast mm. because you all the fish are suffering, which they're really not. But, you know, I got to get the fish out of there. G- got to get them out of there. Let's get this thing done. Get it moved. Go, go, go. That's that could be a problem. Take the fish, put them in something where they're secure. Stick them in, stick them in something that they could be in for a day if they need to. Yeah. A big tote with a heater in it and a, a bubbler and stuff. They're going to be fine. That way you don't have that stress. And you can take your time doing what needs to be done. Boom. Yeah. And if you're... That's my mic drop. (laughs) And if you're just moving from one house to another in the same neighborhood or county, it's a beautiful day outside, you can throw those aquariums in the back of your truck with a little bit of water and the fish still in it. Especially if it's... We've done it. If it's just 20 minutes down the road. I mean, if you're... Stopping at the gas station, going to McDonald's through the drive through to get your lunch. You're going to go to the grocery store on the way there. So I don't suggest that. But if you're just going from one house to the next, it's okay. We drove here. We had a couple tanks left over that we weren't able to fit into that huge U-Haul or the van or the truck when we all drove down together that one night to get everything here we had a couple 75s that we just weren't able to fit in there so we stuck them in the truck and came down here the following weekend we had the aquarium drained down to like this this much water and this wasn't done on purpose i took out all my fish everything i thought well i missed some amano shrimp uh some nearite snails I didn't realize they were still in there, but they were. And they, we drove down four hours and I think, yeah, brought it in, sat it up, set it up, but didn't actually put water in it and put the fish back in that night. But it, it didn't have water in it, except that little bit that was left in for like 24 hours. And all the Amano shrimp lived, the nearite snails lived, everything was fine. It Sometimes you've just, you know and whips world is in the chat right now he was here to witness all of that so he can back us up on all of that uh so yeah just use common sense and understand the fish are not as fragile as you might think they are uh but still take care of the fish that way you're not stressed out about it and you can take your time moving the aquarium yeah you want to get it done fast but you don't want to get it done stupid and ended up have it end up being on your garage floor and your friend's leg cut off. Oh, true. Which could have happened that night. Could have, it definitely could have happened. Before the stream started tonight. That gone this thing. Yeah, we have super chats and memberships. That's what I'm talking about. Jennifer Forant and Lamb uh, either, be, well, they renewed their membership, I believe, but that was like way before the stream started. I don't know if they're in here or not, but if you are, Thank you for renewing your memberships. Thank you. DeMars, uh, with the $20 Canadian, said, Today is two months since my darling passed. Oh, boy, I miss her. I neglected my pets. I woke up today. Hey, I feel good. Water changes. Litter box cleaned. All my pets forgive me. Life goes on. Wow. I I mean, hey, listen. Not quite, not 100% sure what your darling is, if that doesn't matter what it is it, but it might uh, be another it could be a spouse That's it could be a, thinking, a, a yeah. partner it could be a, a pet it, whatever it is uh it is very easy to neglect everything else when you are grieving so yes. nobody can be mad at you for Absolutely. that my friend uh leo 209 aquatics also renewed the membership he, we know he's been a member forever oh, so welcome back, thank you leo. for that uh, Kaylin Shepard, I'm giving entitled brats that give BS reviews one star. <laughs> Thank you, Kaylin. 
Yeah. I, I mean, that's just one of those scenarios where somebody puts in a review and they're, they're just not thinking about it. They're treating it like a Facebook post and it's way more than that. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm not going to go on that whole rant anymore. Yeah, don't do that. King of DIY himself became a member and then decided he's going to gift 10 memberships. He felt bad about the whole thing. Oh, Damar said it was his wife. Oh, Lord have mercy. Sorry, Damar. That's so sad. No one can. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, no one. Anyone can understand why you would neglect other things we all would so oh, yeah um believe me that's, but i'm glad today was a better day for you you know i've i've been through periods of grief in my life like extreme maybe not to that level but uh and you know it is one day like a light bulb everything just kind of comes back on and and you get never really back to normal but as close to normal as you can uh, Tes Tesla Killdozer, $10.13, because that's what he does, is gives the oddball numbers. Thank you. John, I ordered some Bacopa from you recently and had issues with the USPS delays. You guys were great. The Bacopa is coming back and looking healthy. You guys have great customer service. Oh, I needed that Tesla you. Killdozer. Thank you. Because, uh, yeah, after that other one, that was that was brutal. Uh, thank you. I'm glad it all worked out. I mean, there's been... I'm I'm not going to act like there hasn't been a lot of that over the last few weeks. Um, it's not our fault. <laughs> I, I mean, it would, you know, what's weird? It would be easier if it was our fault. But things have happened with the with the postal service delays because of the weather, and uh, you know we've had to send some people some more plants and stuff like that. It sucks, but it is what it is. I ain't sending the guy that gave us one stars. I'm not sending him more plants. He can go buy his plants somewhere else. Leave bad reviews there. <laughs> Joey came in again, petitioned to shut off the 60 second chat delay. Uh, chat has its own conversations. I know. S says the guy that never streams, except I know you did one the other day, but uh, you know, I get it. Um, there you go, Joey. <laughs> Joey's been in the whole time this time instead of creeping in at the last minute like he usually does. Uh, but thank you for that, Joey. And thank you for becoming a member earlier, too. Uh, <coughs> and then DeMar's gifted five memberships. See, this is what happens. This is what you did, Joey. When pe people donate memberships, other people do the same thing. It's so cool. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And everybody is going to get access to the extra videos that we put up every single Sunday. All of the people that got those free memberships. Uh, but just remember, if you enjoy your membership... Because that you were gifted by these fine members of ours. Uh, make sure you re-up when your free period stops. I'm pretty sure YouTube will send you a notification and say, hey, enough freeloading. It's time to start to pay up. And uh, then you get to make your decision. Hopefully we earn you staying a member. That would be a thrill for us. Mac22, keep seeing the yellow fish in the background of the stream. What are they? Can't quite tell. Well, you are no fan of this channel, and he's a channel member, this person. I, I say already he, answered. I, I, I say he, I and I don't know labs. if it's a he. The avatar looks, it's very small. I can't tell. Yeah, it is yellow libidochromis if you want to be all scientific. Uh, and I know it's a beautiful tank. I know. You don't have to tell me. I get it. Uh, yeah, there's a video. There's a whole lot of videos on that tank, including us getting that, those fish from Florida Exotic Fish Sales um, and, uh, you know, rescaping it and all of that. Plenty of videos on the channel about that tank. Liquid Zoo, only fins. It, oh, no, oops. Melissa Jaswald, before that, before I get into the controversy that uh -huh. is Liquid Zoo, huh. Melissa Jaswald said, I just found my new ringtone. It has been Iron Man. Oh, Melissa. It's an Iron Maiden. I was like... No, she said Iron Man. Oh, I thought I read Iron Maiden. That's a Black Iron Sabbath Maiden. song. Melissa, if you're saying Blind from Corn is your new your new ringtone, that's awesome. Because <laughs> I love... I mean, that's it's the best intro to any song. I don't care what anybody says. 
Uh, but then Matt came in and decided he was going to mix things up. And I don't know what Joey's response was to this. But he said, Rod's ch chances of winning are greater than Joey's. Uh-oh. <gasps> De them is fighting words. <laughs> it's almost <laughs> like they're getting ready to fight or something. Now, listen, I'm not going to take anything away from Rod uh, because I don't know the man and he could probably slaughter me. Um, I, you know, I, I would never I, I can't I have to stay neutral because that's my job to stay neutral. Everybody knows Joey and I are friends. Uh, by then, Rod and I will be friends, too. But I don't know. Rod didn't come in and become a member. Uh, well, that's true. <sighs> Um, I'm just kidding. He hasn't even been on our channel before to be in chat. So I will say this and I'll say it during the broadcast. Anybody that thinks, and I'm not saying this because Joey's my friend, I would have said this. He could say in here that he hates me right now. And I would still say this. Anybody that thinks that Rod is going to go in that ring and just walk over Joey. They don't know Joey. Okay. He's got that Canadian heart in him. He's got that no quit attitude uh that no quit heart in him you're not going to walk all over that guy uh so matt you're going to have to get the uh the old pay-per-view you're going to have to use my car my code when we have it and uh you're gonna have to see if you're right i'm not going to make a prediction i i don't know if paul and i are going to be do pre-fight predictions during the broadcast uh, you know, if we are, maybe that's when you'll find out when I'm where I'm leaning with that. But as of right now, uh, I have to stay neutral. And all I will say is, ain't nobody walking in that ring and walking all over Joey. It's just not going to happen. He's got too much heart for that. And uh, I wouldn't want to fight him. And I'm like eight inches taller than Joey. Not that that really matters, but you know. Wow. <laughs> I got to have one thing on him. I got height on him. That's that's about all I got. Uh, Audra Meyer, see what I said? Gifted five channel memberships. Oh, thank you. That's what happens. It's like it's a it's a snowball and it grows. Thank you, Audra. Uh, Blake Robinson couldn't get super chats to go through, so I wanted to send you to love this way and say the bad reviewers can go f themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you two are awesome. And he didn't say the word he wrote. I know. I know. E F F. Yeah, he was having a a hard time putting a super chat through and was worried that he would be charged. I was like, you're not going to be charged. It didn't go through. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And it's a good thing you didn't get charged too. Cause I, I don't think that there's a ability for us to refund. Uh, like, I don't know how all that works. I've never really had to deal with that, but I've just heard of people taking it back. I think she said, I'll use your card. Lisa will hook me up. Yeah. I didn't mean to say card there. I meant to say code. Use my code. Code. Uh, I'm not paying for everybody's pay-per-view for Joey to go, <laughs> for, for to watch Joey's fight. Uh, Finsanity, I've built garages, decks, porches, fixed cars, poured concrete. Two things I do not do. Hold babies and move aquariums over 75 gallons. Not my luck. Hey, listen, I cannot agree with the hold babies thing because babies are precious. and <gasps> Can you so show a picture of baby cat? Can you put a picture of baby cat up? I think oh. I can show that one that you sent me the other day. Oh my gosh. My new granddaughter is so beautiful. They had her pictures done and she just looks like a baby model. This picture really does look like, uh, it almost looks fake. It's so perfect. That's cause she's perfect. You want to see a picture of a beautiful, beautiful baby and this is not grandparents bias here this is just a real yeah, because I this have, is real yeah i have other grandchildren and they're beautiful too they're i have there we all go all my grandbabies are beautiful move that way a little bit so you're not covered up there she is i don't see it yet i'm going to tell you something right now whoever the photographer is that did that is a genius it, ha it doesn't come up yet for me well it's gonna come up for you in a second don't worry but you have to admit, you guys, she's got my nose. She looks like me. She has black hair. She's beautiful. I don't mean I'm beautiful. I'm just saying she's beautiful, but she has a similarity, like a cute little nose. What are you saying? You can be honest. She doesn't. No, that, that's her mother. She is her mother. 
And I'm not going to put up a picture of her mother because that would just be weird, even though it's not weird putting up a picture of a baby. But anyway, she is her mother, and that's not a bad thing. Well, she looks like her dad, too, and her dad is part me. <laughs> she don't look like her dad at all. Uh, she looks like her mother, and, uh, and that's a good thing. The boys look just like him. I still don't see it. Oh, there it is. She's so cute. Yeah, that is a... Uh, that's an adorable picture there. And I don't know how the photographer got her to do that. That's, it looks like an American girl doll. I just said it, but the photo meaning it being the photo looks like a, a, a baby doll. Like that's, that's wild. I don't know how but they you, got her you to don't do that. see the similarity though of the nose. Like, Nope. I see her mother. I, that baby is three weeks old. The, the eyebrows. No, you can keep begging, but it's not going to work. She doesn't it's look like complexion. You. She looks like her mother. Oh, my God. Shut up. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Joe, if you don't hold babies, you don't get to hold precious little things like that. Uh, Leslie Perry, please say hello to my dog, Skeeter. Skeeter, come here. Skeeter. Hi, Skeeter. Skeeter. Hi, Skeeter. <laughs> Skeeter, you she, good boy? She had a, oh, she good girl? had a procedure done where soap and water were applied to her body, and she is grumpy. Aww. One of those dreaded baths, huh? Skeeter, uh. Skeeter, shake, go like this. <laughs> That's my favorite part about giving dogs baths, especially when you do that right in front of mama and it just uh. goes everywhere. It's fun. Uh. <laughs> That's a cute name, Skeeter, too. Uh, oh, come on, computer. Dennis Engel, I'm trying to get to you. Here we are. Do you have an update on the nanochromas, I want to get some. Huh? We don't have those. We don't have those. <laughs> Do you think I'm Primetime Aquatics? Is that what it is? No, we don't have those. They're small cichlids. We don't have those. Yeah, uh, Dennis, I am so sorry. Uh, I believe... Maybe he is getting you and Jason confused because I think he may have those. Or we're, we have fish that we don't know we have. No, we don't have those. Okay. I can promise you we I don't. I didn't think we did either. But, <laughs> we don't have those. Um, yeah, you're probably mistaking us for uh, Primetime Aquatics. And, and the funny thing about that is he sent me a text right before the stream tonight with a screenshot of a comment where somebody in his comments confused them really? for us. That's so funny. <laughs> I mean... Jason and I, the only thing we have in common as far as our looks is we're two, bald. two bald white men with beards. Yeah. But his beard is so luscious and voluptuous where mine, I'm going to let mine grow a little for the, for the winter. But, uh, you know, I like to keep mine trimmed and I don't know. Jason lets his go and it, it looks great on him. But I'm not going to let mine grow to that level. But I am going to have, uh, I'm going to let it grow a little bit. And listen. I have something that I'm uh, rewarding the people. Leslie Perry said, Skeeter's ears are perked and she's so confused. LOL, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Skeeter, that's a good girl, Skeeter. Aw, Skeeter. Uh, listen, folks. I can't give any information yet. But if you are a fan of the... Tank Talk podcast. Mm, oh, that. There might be a very big change coming for that podcast. And it is something that if it happens, I am very, very excited for. Um, I have a meeting about it tomorrow morning. And so I might be able, well, I'll be able to update you on it next week. I'm either going to say, Hey, remember when I said there might be a really cool thing happening with the podcast? No, it's not happening. Or I might be able to say it's on and here's when you can expect to, uh, to, to see that. I think knowing what I know about our audience, I think you will be very, very happy if this change is made. So Lakeisha wants to know how the Episto pairs are doing. <gasps> Very well. They're in the 125 on the bottom with an angel and some Congo Tetras and a lot of snails. 
doing very well. You just did a big service on that tank recently, didn't you? Yeah. It was and 80 degrees in Georgia today. Getting bigger, too. It was 75 here yesterday. And I was like, why am I wearing pants? And I don't mean that in a weird way. Like, why am I not wearing shorts right now? I hate wearing long pants. I want, I'm a, I wish I could wear shorts all year round. So thought about it, but I was like, nope, I'm not going to get my, I'm not going to tease myself like that. today it was humid. It wasn't even a nice hot. Yesterday was nice, but today it was like just humidity, nasty grossness. Ugh. Yep. All right. We got four minutes left, and I want to I want to tell you all about something. Uh oh. Um, because this is happening. I don't know if it's going to happen this weekend, like I originally planned on starting it, because my back decided it was going to be a. Mm, I've had an epiphany. This, this epiphany happened yesterday. Um. And I will explain all of this in a video. A very common question that I get, I'm not going to act like I get it every day, but a very common question that I get is, what happened to the Money Pit channel? Um, well, I'm going to tell you. What happened to the Money Pit channel is uh, 2023 happened. <laughs> 2023 was a rough year, okay? I don't need to get into details. But... 2023 was a rough year and the extra funds that were going to be used for renovation projects on the money pit channel. It just wasn't there. Yeah. I went shopping. <laughs> just kidding. I didn't go shopping. I'm totally joking. And yeah, you know, I mean, grocery <laughs> shopping. Yeah. Um, that's me just being brutally honest with you. You know, they're, they're it, we're not in trouble or anything, but there was to do not anything here. All projects Oh, so much money. That's he the did thing. he did the living room, which he didn't even do a video on for the money pit, which I wish he should have because it looks so good. Very proud of that. I helped a little bit, like I did like five percent of the painting. <laughs> uh but he did a wonderful job, redid the floors in there, everything. Not the green room, but the main like living room addition, not anything that was part of the original house and it was it just turned out so good i wish he had done a video on it i should have uh all i have is pictures uh i am very proud of that project uh the main reason why i didn't do a video on that was because uh it was coming up on christmas and i had a deadline because all the kids were coming and all of this and it was it was you know it needed to be done fast very proud of that I uh, should have documented it, but I didn't. And then 2023 happened. And there just wasn't the... We live in a house that was built in 1830. The projects that I want to do, I'm not a guy that just wants to come in and cover something up. I want to start at the guts and work all the way up and do it right. And that means pretty much any project I do, unless it's replacing a light fixture or something minor is a major, major expense. And I had a, an epiphany yesterday uh, of some projects that I can do that it would actually be better to not do that. Meaning to work with what's there and restore what's there and use things from our property to restore rather than redo. And that was the epiphany I had. And, and, and I said, that's, I used to look at that like, well, that's half-assing it. I don't, I don't half-ass anything. I would rather it sit there and me not do anything than to do it half-ass. That's the, this is, this is our forever home. And unless we win the lottery, we might move back to Virginia, but we, you got to buy lottery tickets in order for that to happen. And we don't buy lottery tickets. So uh, this is our forever home. If I'm going to do a major project like that, I want to do it right. However, there are projects that don't require that. And the first one is one that I was going to start 
this weekend, which is basically a project that I can do that will dramatically change the curb appeal of this property and cost hardly nothing, just barely anything. And my intent was to explain that and start that project in a video on the Money Pit channel and then my back blew up. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, I might still be able to, to do something this weekend, but my luck, there'll be like a hurricane or <laughs> I've not seen a, a flake of snow since we moved down here, but we'll get a blizzard or something on Saturday or it'll rain all day or something. I don't know. There's always got to be something. But if, if the world doesn't come crashing down on Saturday, I will be starting that. That doesn't mean a video is going to go up on the Money Pit channel on Saturday, but uh, that will be what the next video for the Money Pit channel is going to be. It might be a few years. It might not get put up and it's not going to get put up until the, the project is done which means I might be retirement age by the time it happens. But what are you going to do? I'm going to try because I do. I'm really excited about that channel and I really want to share these things. But I just, I mean, I'm not going to do videos of me changing light bulbs. Hmm. I should have done a video tearing down the screen porch. I should have done a video on yeah. the, the living room. Well, when you took the paint off that one spot in that living room it's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. Have you priced wood? It's not exactly cheap. Yeah. Th see, that's the thing. Okay. The project that I'm going to be starting on is the lean to on my barn. Whip's been here. He's seen it. It is a tremendous eyesore. If you're not familiar with what a lean to is, you've got a barn and then there's that, that little roof that extends over the end. That's called a lean to. I've got one on both sides of our barn. Um, it would look funny if you only had one. Oh, no, there's a lot of people that just do one. But we have oh. two. Both of them okay. are a wreck. <laughs> uh, the They're collapsing. The metal roof on them is all gnarly and horrible. And it's just, it's just a nightmare. They look horrible. And you can see it from the street. You can't, but people who drive by can. And it's always been something that's bothered me. And I've always looked at it as a at least a five to $6,000 project each side of this barn. The barn predates the 1900, 1900. I don't know exactly when it was built, but I've got a photograph of that barn from 1901. So this barn is a special building. And if I, again, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right. But I was looking at it yesterday and I said, you know what, I can do it right and not spend five or $6,000 on each side. So that's where that's what that video is going to be is so me starting that project to do it that way. I just I like to just do things without having to spend if possible. It's like why spend it just to spend it? Well, and you know, I've had the fantasies of enclosing it and making it a 60 or 72 foot long by 16 foot wide shed. I, but now, you want to talk about thousands of dollars. Oh. That I mean, I've seen those too. That one I took you to see that time, how they had enclosed both sides and it looked like one side was actually finished and you could go in it like it was probably a man cave or something on yep. one side. And I think that would be cool to do one side that way and the other side like what you're saying. You just want that one side to be your cat rescue and you know it. I and want that's the a whole good idea, barn actually. to be the cat rescue <laughs> and the lean-tos to be the catios. Like make the lean-tos on each side of the barn the catios since there's windows inside each room. And then, oh, that would be my dream. Whips World said the posts alone will cost you a fortune. And you're right. However... The posts that are already there, perfectly fine. And that's my point. That's that's what I'm getting at here. So what I'm going to end up doing is lifting the, supporting the lean-tos and just with each individual post. See, here's the problem. We live in the coastal plains of North Carolina, which means we live on a beach. We can't see any water, but we it's like living at the beach. You go out in my yard, you can pull, pick up a handful of sand. So when you build something like that and you use a 12 inch round post to support a lean to after a hundred years, 
it settles and it sinks and that's what makes the whole lean to do this kind of thing and so what i'm going to do is each one i'm going to support the roof each one i'm going to take out of the ground and then fill it in and then re install those posts but i'm going to use a footer and i'm going to use concrete concrete it's like six dollars a bag you know that's how again using what i already have and just making it right and that's i believe that is a better project than tearing it down and rebuilding it from scratch which is what i was originally going to do um so if you're interested in that kind of thing the money pit channel is where you will subscribe for that i've got like 1500 subscribers on that channel i put up oh. one video whip said i should let you do that and enclose it so you can give me my sulcata tortoise she said for a cat rescue not a sulcata rescue mm. anyway a good idea, though. we have a couple of last minute super chats that came in here uh Whips world uh, shocker he shows up super chats start uh listen to the wind <laughs> blow watch the sunrise one in the shadows i don't know the name of that fleetwood mac song or is yeah. that a stevie nicks song fleetwood. it's a fleetwood mac song yeah the chain what the chain okay yep yeah i mean we're i'm gonna get fleetwood mac every time because of her because she forces me <laughs> but that's a classic song i don't know the name of it but it's a classic song wow. um I mean, you just told me the name. Before that, I didn't know the name of it. Paramount Investments, how's it going, Pair, with the $5 Super Chat? Well, it's not going good. Had a lot of fun on the live stream tonight, but uh, as far as my back goes, it's not going very good. But thank you for the Super Chat. Thank you very much for that, though, <laughs> yes. Allison Dalton, I took my love. I took it down. I, oh, here's this. That's Landslide. I don't even have to read anymore, <laughs> right? He, that's the only song he knows. That's why I knew he was going to get that one. And it's because of the Smashing Pumpkins version, which is better. It is uh, not. It, it most certainly is. No, it is. isn't. You even it is. heard Come her on. in concert singing it. I, I, and it was, it was marvelous. She's amazing. Uh, but Billy Corgan's version Take is better. Get I, out. I won't. Leave. <laughs> I won't. Go I, that way. Hey, listen. I bought you those tickets. I don't care. Because, uh, because I love She's you. She's going to be in Charlotte. I've already seen her. I ain't worried about it. I've already seen her too. I could go again. There was vomit on the floor. I can't do that again. I blame it on Stevie Nicks. It was not her fault. There was a lot of drunk people at the Stevie Nicks concert. Yeah. I, I had a couple glasses of wine, but it was a really good show. It was. I, a great I enjoyed show. myself, um, and you know, she did my favorite song too. So. Um, Anyway, I don't have anything else to talk about. This has been fun. Uh, but yeah, but I will say again, if you're, if you're a smart person, you know oh. that the Smashing Pumpkins version Uncle is better. Uncle Fish Keeper agreed with you, but I'll just ban, I'm going to ban him. <laughs> Put user in timeout. Billy Corgan is one of my favorite people on the planet. <laughs> He just is. You want to see? Did you? De you deleted that? <laughs> no, I just timed him out for ten seconds. Uncle Fishkeeper, understand? She is being a rascal when she does that. You take it back. You, I, I, Liz. I'm going to hear this afterwards. She's going to be really mad at me for saying that uh, that that Billy Corgan's version is better. But it is. I mean, listen, listen to both versions. I understand Billy Corgan has a weird voice, but that's why I love it. That's why I love his, his music. I was in a band. We did Smashing Pumpkins songs. I could make my voice sound just like him. Uh, I've been a fan of Smashing Pumpkins since the 90s. I think it's a travesty that they were lumped in with grunge music, which is outrageous because they're, they're not. Uh, but simply because it was the time they lumped them in with, with grunge, which is terrible. But... Uh, yeah, I'm a Smashing Pumpkins fan. I'm an even bigger Billy Corgan fan. And I think his version of Landslide is, I just think it's better. Sorry. Timing you out for 10 <laughs> seconds, too. <laughs> Time out. I'll get to go to bed early tonight. That's a good thing. Anyway, 
folks, this has been a lot of fun. I'm not going to sing Victor Claudio. No, I mean, the word, I'm talking about when I was 22 years old. Uh, I ain't, I ain't got it. I can still do it, but uh, we did um, Cherub Rock was the song that we did. I don't even, uh, when I was in a band singing Smashing, we did a lot of bands, um, but Smashing Pumpkins was one of them. I don't even think Landslide had come out at that point. And if it had, well, I wouldn't have sang that. Zeuslia one said Fleetwood Mac was my first concert in 1982. My first Fleetwood, con- Fleetwood Mac concert was in 1976 when my mom was pregnant with me. Mm. I went. I heard the whole thing, and it was a great show, I promise. Good morning from South Africa. Wow, it's the evening time for us. It's almost bedtime for us. That's very cool. Welcome all the way from South Africa. The only song remake that was better than the original was not Fade Away by Tanya Tucker. Hers was way better than Buddy Holly's. I love Tanya Tucker. I like Tanya Tucker. She's uh, awesome. I'm going to disagree with you, though, and wow. I'm going to say something that is blasphemous. I like it. Not, it's not blasphemous for you because you can't stand this guy. Oh. But it's blaspheme for me to say this because it's about one of my favorite musicians of all time. I grew up a Billy Joel fan. The best, the the first article of music that I ever owned was a cassette tape of Glass Houses from Billy Joel. My dad introduced me to him, and I've been a Billy Joel fan ever since. I've seen him seven times in concert. Love that man. Sat right behind Christy Brinkley at one of the shows. I'm also a very big Garth Brooks fan, and I'll say it to your face. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, Garth Brooks is godlike in the music industry. And I have to say it, as big of a Billy Joel fan as I am, and as much as a, of a god as he is to me, I like Garth Brooks' version of Shameless better than the original by Billy Joel. Again, if you haven't heard it, listen to both. Shameless, just like the TV show, from Billy Joel, and then listen to Garth Brooks. Even if you don't like country music, it's, it's okay. It's a Billy Joel song. Best remake is Sound of Silence by Disturbed. Oh, I'm not going to argue with you there. If you time delay Uncle Fishkeeper for that, you're sleeping in the fish house tonight. That is facts right there. You're just showing off. Because that, I mean, I'm a Disturbed guy. Come on. Uh, I absolutely love Disturbed. And I did not like that song at all. I thought it was a stupid, hippie, Woodstock, pot-smoking, dumb song. I don't have anything against pot smokers. Um, When David Draymond sang that song, I said, oh, my God. Like, that's a whole nother level right there. And so, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Definitely better than, what is it? I don't even know who it is. What is it, Simon and Garfunkel? I, I'm not interested in that original song. Uh, I'm going to listen to that right now. You should. Because, I, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Either one, you're, uh, you're fine. Whether it's Sound of Silence or Shameless. Jeff Buckley, Hallelujah, is better than the original. I don't know the original. So, sure. I, I'll agree with you there. Sure. His version of Shameless is better than Billy, and I love Billy as well. Yeah, I mean, listen. Billy Joel is a, a, a god on earth right now. And uh, I like Garth's Garth, Garth version better. I just do. Anyway, listen. It's 944. I don't think Ed's stream in the night, but I've talked... But- long enough he might be if ed is streaming then maybe zen could share the link because they have been streaming sometimes afterwards i just never know exactly you know and if it well ed's not streaming and somebody else is streaming in a spot i don't know all the details to that but i would just put ed's link in the chat if you can zen please i need to mention i saw something interesting the other night Really? Do you want to talk about the other night? I thought that was private. What are you talking about? Monday night? Went to play darts? I don't think I want to talk about that. 
We didn't do very well. Oh, no, I did fine. No, we didn't do very well. I did fine at cricket. Okay. Well, I did better than you. Um, I got beat, but I did, I did better fine. than you at 301, and you were my true. partner. I, that was, it was, it was terrible. The but guy we were playing got a 180. Like, what the hell? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't it was fair. That, that was so unfair. We told the captain of our team, like, hey, listen, we just started playing. And she's like, oh, go up against Al. It's no big deal. And he's dropping 180s on us. And it's like, really? That, yeah. that's, that's who you think we should be playing? But he did in the beginning say, it's business, nothing personal. <laughs> and gave us a fist bump. And I was like, okay. Very he was nice a super guy. nice guy. Yeah, and and nice. I, got, I got some tips. Um, if you're a dart fan, I know there's not very many of us in the United States that are dart fans. But if you've ever heard of Stow Bunts, uh, he plays in the same league as us sometimes when he's not in Europe playing in the world championships. Um, I hope to, to be able to meet him. But anyway, a good friend of his was the team we were playing against, and he gave me a tip that changed my game. And I'm so, so happy about that. And you, she doesn't want to play me anymore because I just smoke her. What's that person stopping there for? Somebody's oh. stopping in front of our house. And around here, you don't do that kind of thing. Maybe they want to come join the live stream. Oh, I hope it's not a cat. Like, you don't think they stop because of the cat, do you? Y'all are seeing this live. Whatever happens. Oh, there he goes. He's pulling away. <gasps> oh. uh, that doesn't Maybe. happen around here. I wonder if he stopped. Maybe there's a cat out there. I wonder if it's White Kitty. I don't know. Anyway. Might. I have to go check. We're not going to get swatted like Jeff Rose did, that poor guy. I don't know if he's still in here. <sighs> live on, on YouTube. What a what a disaster that was. Felt bad for him. Uh, but that wasn't a cop. That was, although cops do drive trucks around here. But uh, Yeah, we have a cop that drives trucks around Yeah, but that was a truck. Uh, anyway, maybe they drove by and saw all the lights in the building. They were like, what the hell's going on in there? They must be talking about, like, smashing pumpkins or something. Uh, but, yeah. It, Anyway, that guy gave me a tip that uh, has changed things forever, and uh, and I'm really happy about that. So we're playing in a league on Monday nights, and uh, we're just going to go up there and get our butt kicks. Get butts kicked every Monday. It'll be fun. It's fun. Anyway. It's fine. It's fun. <laughs> if you're not having fun, then what's the point in going? Did anybody mention And it's funny Stobots? because they, they drink beer and stuff there. It's hilarious. Because it's a bar. I just sipped on my soda. <laughs> we, yeah, I, I'm not a drinker, so that's <laughs> Leslie really... Perry said he probably just dumped a cat in your yard. Probably. Yeah, those are those weirdos that keep all the cats. That's, that is probably what he did. So, yes, Ed is streaming tonight, so oh, we got to okay. get out of here because we're being rude. Oh, uh, we're not like the other people that stream over top of others. But, well, we kind of did if they started at But we didn't mean to. We were yeah. talking about David Draymond yeah. and Billy Corgan and all yeah. of those people. But you know what, if anybody's bored and you don't have anything to do on Sunday, I'll be streaming at four o'clock on my Roots and Whiskers channel. So if you want to come talk about cats and plants and just chat and have a good time or watch me make a fool of myself or whatever. She's good. She's not making a fool no, of herself. No, it's fun though. I've been having a great time. There's been a few people coming. I've had what, like 30, 40 people coming. It's been a lot of fun. So yeah. If you want to come on Sunday to my live stream, it's at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Roots and Whiskers. Yeah. Now say goodbye to everybody. It's your job, remember? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's the funny thing. I have to say bye on my own channel, too. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, thank you, Maud. You guys are awesome. We appreciate you. And I um, thank you, everybody who, who uh, sent Super Chats and uh, memberships. Thank you very much. And just thank you, everybody, for being here. It was a fun fun stream. We tried to stay on topic, but kind of got off topic a little bit. Sorry about okay. that. John's fault. I tried. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful night and a great weekend. And we'll see you. I'll see you Sunday, some of you. And we'll see you next Thursday. Bye.